Greetings folks, this is the Runcam 5. It's a very, very interesting camera from Runcam. Very, very encouraging. Uh, it's sort of a, it's a cube shape, sort of an update to the Runcam 3S. There was a Runcam 4 somewhere, but that didn't get widely released. So cube shaped, uh, really designed for the uh, quad market, I suppose. Instruction manual there. It is a little cube shape. It's smaller than the Runcam 3S and uh, a lot lighter too. Runcam 3S is 70 gram. Runcam 5 is 56 grams, I think, but I'll check that. 55.5 Mobius, 47.2. So it's, it's nice and light. It's the right size to fit all the existing GoPro session mounts, I believe. Not that that worries me at all, so it's quite a lot smaller than the Runcam 3. Uh, the Runcam 3 has a removable battery. Uh, the Runcam 5 doesn't. It's an internal battery. It's, what is it, 900, 950 milliamp hours, uh, which gives you 90 minutes of recording at 1080 60 or 60 minutes of recording at 4K 30. Yes, it does 4K 30 frames a second. Very impressive. The sensor is the Sony IMX377 12 megapixel sensor, which is the same as the SJ Cam SJ8 Pro. Really, really top end, high quality image sensor. So it should be possible to get very good quality uh, results from this camera. Field of view 145 degrees. Uh, just one button operation. There's nothing else, only one button. No Wi Fi. Doesn't come with a TV out cable, although you can get one from Runcam. Uh, and actually, I'll, I'll show you how it works with the, the cable that came with the uh, 3S. No image stabilization. They've sort of simplified it, kept it light, made it cheaper. So, if there's no Wi Fi, how do you set it up? Well, it's really interesting. So, you use your smartphone, download the SJ Cam uh, app, uh, you set up all the parameters on the phone. It generates a QR code, one of those dotty codes, and you just hold, put the camera into setup mode, hold the QR code in front of the camera, takes a shot, and uh, loads all the settings. It sounds kind of weird and kind of old school, but it works really, really well. So if you have a closer look, on the top we get the one button and uh, a little indicator LED. If you push and hold to turn it on, you get the green LED lighting up there, and if you push quickly twice, you put into setup mode which goes to the blue light, then you can take a picture of the uh, QR code to set it up. And when you're charging you'll get a, gr a red light here uh, and it'll go out when it's fully charged. We get a micro USB uh, charging and image transfer cable and a couple of flash looking uh, Velcro straps too. And on the left hand side we get a sliding door slide it aside and that's where you put the little SD card in there. Because it's a high resolution sensor they recommend at least a U1 speed car or U3 if you're going to record at higher resolutions and higher frame rates. You can power it externally and use it for an FPV camera if you want to, I wouldn't recommend it, uh, using that TV out cable. You can power it from 5 to 15 volts uh, so not 4S, but really the best idea is to use this as the HD recording camera and have a separate FPV system. Now let's have a quick look at the instruction manual. When you power it on, if the charge is less than 25%, the blue LED will, will flash for three seconds to let you know. The resolutions and frame rates are sort of restricted. There's only five to choose from, uh, but you can choose high, medium and low video quality. Why you wouldn't go for high, I don't know. The only problem would be is if your card is uh, not keeping up with it. Micro SD card up to 128 gigabytes. U3 speed card is recommended for 2.7K 50. Oh, the 2.7K uh, can only do 50 frames a second. It can't do 60 frames a second. So that's a little bit annoying. 1080p 120. So I'll just show you how to use the QR code setup system. You open the app choose the Runcam 5, the QR code configuration, and then you just go through the settings, video quality, high, medium or low. Let's stick with high, loop recording on and off, auto recording on and off. Pick the rest, different resolutions, and we've got general settings as well, date stamp, Runcam logo, flip upside down, saturation, exposure, compensation, contrast, sharpness. Now, 
from what I've seen so far, it is way over sharpened, so I think we'll drop the sharpness down to minimum. One, average metering, different sorts of metering. Center weighted average metering, that sounds good to me. White balances, uh, all the choices, very good. We'll leave it on auto and see how that is. Low light image enhancement, auto shutdown, and your power frequency. All right, so once you've set them up like that, you click apply and you get the QR code get the camera, give it a double press, we get the blue light pointed at, we get the beep and it goes to green and that has transferred all those settings onto the camera. And once you get your head around it, it is just fantastic. It works beautifully. Simple, foolproof. And you can have a look there and it'll tell you what they all are. There's a second way of setting up the camera as well and that's using the, the uh, configuration file that actually exists on the SD card. Just a text file that you open up and uh, if you read through you can see it gives you all the options and the number that you have to enter to set that option. Uh, you can do it all on, on your computer and uh, load it onto the SD card instead of having to do the QR code setup. But seriously I find that QR code idea works very very well. Very very easy. I'll just explain about these resolution choices a little bit. For K30 is the highest resolution, 169 aspect ratio. I think the sensor is 43 aspect ratio, so it's cropping out the top and the bottom. The XV version, or expanded view, I think it is, takes the full sensor 4 by 4.3 uh, aspect ratio and stretches it out to 169, so it's distorted, uh, but you get more angle of view uh, top and bottom. Same with the 108060 XV there. You'll note if we choose the 440p 60 frames a second which is the 43 aspect ratio and we also choose distortion correction we've got a 43 aspect ratio result with distortion correction now this doesn't reduce the fisheye effect it actually increases the fisheye effect and i think it's specifically designed to work with the uh, 43 aspect ratio result and that allows you later on to stretch it out to 169 in post processing and with the, this particular distortion correction on it will give you the authentic super view look with undistorted in the center section of the image and sort of progressively more distorted out towards the edges. What it achieves is it gives you the greatest possible field of view from the 4-3 aspect ratio sensor but in a, a sort of a pleasing 16-9 aspect ratio result. Very tricky, very clever. Here's the TV out cable that you can get uh, from Runcam, or this this is the one that came with the Runcam 3S, so we'll just plug that in the side, micro USB. We have uh, power in and video out. I have a powered video transmitter here. And we'll turn the camera on. Runcam startup screen, and there we go. So we have the mode, well there's only video mode. SD card is in, time available on the card, uh, battery, firmware version and resolution down there and you can't get rid of that screen. That stuff's always on there. Bit of delay. So that's now in setup mode. Uh, that's just doing weird stuff. Well, it's just zooming in and out. That's interesting. I wonder what it's doing that for. Turning it off. That's a meaningless mode, I think. Turn it on again. Really designed as just a high quality HD recording camera. And the audio quality traditionally on these Runcam cameras is not very good. I believe it's pretty thin, low volume and uh, weedy sounding. Generally, it's, it's okay for ambient sound on a plane or a quad, I suppose, but you wouldn't use it for talking to camera. We'll have a look at the image quality now and some of the different resolutions. This is uh, 4K, 30 frames a second, beautiful image. Nice and sharp, looks great. This is the expanded view where we're using the full 4-3 aspect ratio sensor and stretching it out to 16-9.
this is 2.7K 50 frames a second. If that was 60 frames, it would be wonderful. This is 1440, 4-3 uh, aspect ratio, the full sensor, more view top and bottom. And this is with the distortion correction turned on and it does something odd, it, it sort of uh, squishes it up in the center. But I'm pretty sure that is designed to be stretched later on in post-processing like this, so then you get a kind of a GoPro style super view with normal uh, magnification in the middle and stretched out to the edges. Uh, this is 1080-60, nice useful uh, resolution to use and distortion correction on works the other way, it actually straightens out the uh, distortion a bit so it's pretty clever with the distortion correction at different modes for different resolutions. Now I show the same same effect on the car there, that's just 1440. Now with distortion correction on and you can see in the centre part uh, the view gets squished up and it's stretched out or normal out towards the edges. But with the post processing stretched it out to 16.9 it's normal in the middle and stretched out to the edges. And that gives you the widest possible view from the 4.3 sensor. So there we have the Runcam 5, a brilliant little cube camera. Probably the best of the onboard cameras, I think. 4K30 is sensational. I think the stock sharpening is too much. You need to drop that down to, to one for a better effect. Distortion correction works nicely on the 16.9 aspect ratio resolutions. And on the full sensor 4.3 aspect ratio, 1440p, the distortion correction gives you the opportunity to stretch it out in post-processing and end up with a GoPro style super view, which is pretty cool. Really like the QR code uh, setup, although you may struggle a bit in bright sunny conditions.
Auto white balance gives a slightly pink look, I suppose. Uh, but uh, nothing that can't be fixed in post-processing and it's not too bad at all really. This is a vast improvement on the Runcam 3S. Super small, super light and great quality. Really, really impressed with this camera. Thanks for watching.